Well, let's let's start with our first point and play devil's advocate here a little bit because as you guys know, these championships are supposed to be hard to rack up, right? Four and five years, <laughs> that would be tough to do. So what is the biggest obstacle, the best case against them winning again? Probably injuries. You know, you make long playoff runs uh, year after year, and it does wear down your body. You just have a shorter summer coming into it. And, you know, some of these guys are getting older. I think two players, you know, Iguodala and Livingston, who are great off the bench for those guys, they're all they're getting older. Their, their, their ability to defend multiple positions and really, really become an elite defensive team is going to start just going down a little bit with age. So I'd say, you know, just... Lack of interest might be the number one thing, I think, they, for the regular season. But injuries, as, as you get older, I think it was Isaiah, you went through it too. We went through a lot of playoff runs. We all got beat up towards the end of that. Bigger, yes. bigger enemy of a, of a potential three-peat team, complacency or the grind and the accumulation of all those games? I, I would say um, I, I would put that under one category and just call it mental fatigue. Um, and sometimes you, you, you lose your concentration and uh, the fatigue and, uh, of the physical fatigue that you've been playing all these years. And then there's no big moments. You know, there's no more big, there's no more big games. There's no more big hurdles. And, and you have to kind of trick yourself into being mad at somebody or <laughs> being mad at the other team or finding some storyline to kind of get you motivated. So what inspires you right now? And listening to the Warriors talk, you know, they're, they're incentivized by, you know, the three-peat being one of only, you know, two or three teams to ever do it. And then they're incentivized by, okay, putting themselves in a different category with the Celtics, you know. So th those, are, those are milestones that they're trying to chase. But I look at them right now and I just worry about their concentration level and their mental fatigue. And can they find the big mountain to inspire them? Well, what about an opponent? I mean, there are others who are going to have a say about whether the Warriors win a championship again. Certainly folks in Houston feel like a healthy Chris Paul might have made the difference between the Rockets representing the West and the Warriors last year. Boston Celtics are loaded out in the East. Kyrie Irving says yes to the question, can we beat them in a seven-game series? You know, when, when we were winning championships and we were like the dominant team in the league, and I'm sure, you know, we, we learned this from the Celtics, you, you really you really only plan against yourself. Yep. You know, you're not, you don't feel like any of these other teams can beat you if you bring your A game. So you, you're constantly battling self. So it's a battle of self in terms of can you play against the game itself, not necessarily against the opponent. So you're playing, trying not to make turnovers, you're trying to make the perfect play, but you're really battling against yourself and the opponent really doesn't matter. Yeah, you, know, you might say Houston gave them a good run, which they did in Western Conference Finals. But Golden State's saying, well, we finally moved the ball in game six and seven. We had way too much Durant one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Uh, Houston's defense did a nice job of slowing them down. Houston's offense slows you down. You know, with D'Antoni, used to be seven seconds or less. Now it's seven ball screens or more. I mean, they just, they just, <laughs> it just slows it down. So they had a way of getting Golden State out of their game. But Golden State is not saying oh, Houston came close. They said, we finally started playing our game. The second half of um, uh, game six, we moved the ball, we attacked. Mm -hmm. Not as much KD one-on-one. -on -one. So you're playing yourself. So when you're at, at the level that, that they're at, they're really not concerned about the competition at all. I mean, they could care less what anybody else around the league is doing. They don't care about what Houston did, what Boston did. They're worried about themselves. And, you know, that's not just Golden State. I think that's the, that's the championship mindset. That's mm -hmm. the champion's mentality, you know, whether it be football or basketball, or whatever. You're always saying if, if we do the things that we're supposed to do as a basketball team, then we're going to win the game yep. regardless of who we play against. what might be the most surprising team player hookup of the summer, Cuz coming over on a one-year cap-friendly deal. He was asked on Media Day about how he fits in with the champs. I'm, I'm always myself no matter what. Uh, I, I think that's, that's what makes, you know, having a team so special. Everyone's able to be their self, and you have to learn to accept everybody for who they are. So uh, with that being said, I mean, it's not about stepping on anybody's toes. Our job is to come in here and win games, and uh, I think everybody has the same mindset coming in. We want to win games and ultimately win a championship, so uh, that's the ultimate goal. Okay, where are you right now in the rehab process? Are you ahead of schedule? Uh, I'm all healed. Uh, I haven't had any setbacks, and right now it's just about building strength. So uh, it's, 
any day now, so uh, we'll uh, figure that out eventually, and uh, we'll come together and figure out that return date. So. Because there with Roz Gold on Wood A, uh, Steve Kerr talked about having a, a different post-up option, a new wrinkle to that Warriors offense. How can he deploy Cuz when he comes back, whenever that might be? And what will Cuz have to adjust to? I think the best thing that's ha going to happen is Cousins is, is going to come back after Golden State's already played probably 20, 25 games. You know, if, if you're 20 and four, or, you know, 21 and four, he comes back in and says, yeah, we're changing how we're playing. They're saying, no, we're not changing how we're playing. You're going to adapt to us. So I think all the adaptation is from Cousins to the Golden State Warriors. They're not going to adapt their style to him. What he does bring them is the ability to pass the ball very well from the high post, elbows. He's, you know, he sees the floor. Mm -hmm. um, I think it hurts him defensively. He's not able to switch. He's not able to get up on pick and rolls. He's not, he's not as active as JaVale McGee was um, in, in the de on the defensive side. But, you know, there's always a trade-off with, 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 with big guys. Like, you know, if he's really skilled, he's going to be on the floor for his offense. His defense is going to have to be, is going to have to improve. He's going to have to be more aggressive with how Golden State likes to switch a lot of things. But, um, you know, I think that it's, it's going to be a situation where Boogie Cousins is going to have to adapt and just say winning is the most important thing. He may not get the big numbers. He may not get a lot of that. But everybody knows what he can do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he fits in with this Golden State team. It, it's really interesting because his offensive skills are off the charts for a big. But that position with the Warriors, their, their bigs the last few years during these championship years have been primarily defensive-oriented players. Andrew Bogut, JaVale McGee, and the like. Yeah, and, and he brings them another defensive presence that's a little different because it, it comes from a mindset now. They've gone from, in my opinion, being perceived as a kind of soft, vanilla team to probably the toughest team in the West. When you look at Cousins, you look at Draymond Green, you look at Kevin Durant, right? Those three guys now, these are perceived tough guys in the, in the NBA. So, you know, arguably you can say you know, their mindset and mentally when they're walking into the gym right now, these are the toughest guys. This is the toughest team physically, mentally, that most teams are going to play against. And Cousins gives them that addition. I mean, he and Draymond Green alone is enough to scare the whole league together. You know, so <laughs> now, now when you put everybody else's mentality, I mean, Clay's a tough boy, right? Then you look at Durant. And people like to say that Steph Curry's soft, but I don't see anything soft about him, right? So these five guys, when they're walking out on the floor, I mean, their mentality is going to scare a lot of people as well as their basketball playing ability. And his ability to rebound the ball, too. I think one of the things on the defensive end, every defensive possession has got to end with a defensive rebound. He's going to rebound the, well, rebound the ball well for them mm -hmm. on the defensive side, which is something I thought in the past that you could kind of beat up um, Golden State on a little bit, especially mm -hmm. when, when they went small. You could right. get on the glass on them and try to you know, get extra possessions. I remember a lot of these guys know Cuz from USA Basketball already. They know what they're getting into. And for Cuz, he's got everything to prove here in terms of his health in a contract year and whether he can fit in with this championship team that has been built on moving the ball around and playing for each other rather than one-on-one -on -one kind of basketball. There is at least the potential of both Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson walking via free agency next summer. Will this be something to watch during the season? No, I don't think so. I, I, I just think that, again, you have to look for things with Golden State to say, why won't they win? But I think those guys are going to have good years. I, I, in, it, they may think about it a little bit as far as I'm going to be a free agent, but they're really, those guys want to win, and they understand that Isaiah said it, you know, there's not a lot of big moments for them, but the biggest moment is the championship. Anything short of that's a bad season. Right. The year they won 73 and lost was considered a bad season for, for Golden State Warriors. So these guys have just a different mindset. They've both proven how good they are. They're both going to get paid a ton of money. I, 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 I don't think that will be an issue. I really don't. I think they're, 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 they're both those guys are too mature to allow their free agency to just hurt the team. They're just, they're, 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 that's not the type of people they are. They're just going to go out they're going to do their thing. I mean, they're going to play basketball. Clay doesn't say much anyways. Right. KD doesn't <laughs> say much. I mean, they're just going to go they're just right. going to go hoop. And that's what they do. They're just hoopers. And 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 I think, you know, two two guys like that coming into free agency, right? 
they're not going to have bad years. Right. So if, you look, if you're looking at these two guys and you're saying they're potential free agents, this could be a distraction. Well, as former players, we know we're going to make all our free throws this year, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we ain't missing no layups. We're going to make every shot we take. I mean, you're trying to have your best year going into free agency. So I look at Clay and I look at Durant, and I see them inspired by their free agency year and wanting to prove and improve and keep getting better. Even if they had terrible years by their standards, every other team in the league would go after them and offer yes, them as yeah. much as they possibly could. Yeah. One bad year by Kevin Durant is not going to erase everything we've seen from that guy up right. to this point. He's a great player. You know, and I think Clay Thompson is one of those guys that could fit on any team. He doesn't need the ball. He doesn't right. hold it. Hell, he has 50-some points. I think he had the ball in his hand for nine seconds. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it was 88 yeah. seconds. Yeah. It was something yeah. ridiculous. So yeah. he fits in with everybody. So these guys are not, they're not the, like, if you told me a Draymond Green type personality was a free agent, I could see more because he talks a lot. And stuff. These guys are just quiet. They right. go about their business and just get it done. Yeah. And I think Durant wants to establish or reestablish himself as being the best player in the league again. Yeah. I think he's established himself as being the best player in, in the NBA Finals. But now I think he's saying, okay, I want to be the best in the league and I want to be recognized and acknowledged as the best in the league. Sadly, there's no JaVale McGee or Swaggy P available for this season's <laughs> dubs. You lose the entertainment value as well as their, their individual contributions. Yes. Uh, but the star power remains, as does Andre Iguodala. Veteran Jonas Jerebko and rookie uh, Jacob Evans out of Cincinnati, Golden State's first round pick, join the group. Uh, as you look at this roster and the roster tweaks, anything stand out to you about this group? It is just about as perfect of a roster, you know, that, that, that you can have. I mean, it really is like, you know, it's like fantasy basketball right now in terms of what they put together out there. I, I can't. I mean, every position is, is really perfect, and it, and it really fits their system and their style of play and the way they want to play. Now you got Cuz, who can post 36% three-point shoot over the last couple of seasons. He, he can pass, can do a lot of different things. How do you expect him to fit in? And physically, we'll get into that as well, when he comes back, what he'll be able to do. Right. Well, I think they're going to be able to use Cousins down the low post a little bit as more of a passer. They did that with Draymond Green. They put Draymond Green over in the box over here, and he wasn't really trying to score. He was just letting flare screens, back cuts. He was a tremendous passer out of there. I think they can do that with Boogie Cousins, but also he'll have the ability to maybe back a guy down and get his own shot off way better than Green. He's, he's much more of a skilled post player than Draymond Green is. So it just gives them an, another added dimension. But I really like Boogie Cousins up here a lot more. I like him up at the elbows. I like him at the top of the key. He's got great vision. Mm -hmm. He'll find guys passing, and their movement is what sets them apart. You know, Isaiah said they're like a perfectly assembled team. They shoot over 50% you know, overall, and they lead in the league. And, from, and then they shoot, the, they lead the league in three-point shooting also. So the, well, if you get guys that can pass the ball, shooters love that. Klay Thompson's going to love coming off a double and having Boogie hitting him right in the pocket. And that's what Draymond Green's at. Draymond Green does a great job. Might be the best big man. He's not a big man, but he's 6'5". Yeah, so. yeah. But anyways, he might be the best. He might be the best as far as hitting guys right in their pocket at the right time for shooters. Shooters love the ball coming right here, yeah. and Boogie can pass it. What about the recovery curve? You had that injury, torn Achilles. Remember, Cuz has hit, had his rather at the end of January. Obviously, there's no firm timeline on when he'll return, but probably December at the earliest and maybe even January. How long will it take him to get back to the Cuz we've seen over these years? I, I, don't, I don't think it will take him very long uh, because what, what he's going to have to be conscious of is his movement up and down the floor. And he's not, he never was a high flyer, right, right? right? So his movement up and down the floor, his lateral movement, all of those things will come back to him quickly. His, his below the rim game is still going to be sharp. So I, I see him fitting in perfectly right away and being able to do everything that he wants to do. The only thing he's going to have to worry about is stamina. Do I have enough stamina? Have I gotten myself in enough good physical shape mm -hmm. to get up and down the court the way I need to get up and down the court to play with the Warriors. When he's out there, the Warriors will be the first team in 10 years to have four players who averaged 20 the previous season <laughs> play at the same time. 
How was your summer? On June 23rd, Andre Iguodala hit a home run off Raiders running back Marshawn Lynch during JaVale McGee's charity softball game. Pretty cool. Showing off the biceps. Some of the other athletes there, Richard Sherman, Kevin Durant, entertainer Amber Rose as well. He's taking his time, milking it. I don't know. I, Going I, sideways. Yeah, Lynch, Lynch, Lynch got him, though. <laughs> you, can't be, you can't be backpedaling from third base. Yeah, you do have to touch home. You can't home. show me up now. You have to yeah. touch home plate, otherwise it's not a legal play. Let's get to the bottom line here. Will the Warriors win more or fewer than 62 and a half this season? Ooh. You, sh you should be able to say well over 62 and a half. They might be disinterested again like they were last year. So I'm going to go over just because I think they have the capability of winning 65, 66 games easily. I I'm going to go more also. I'm going I'm to go 65, 66. More importantly, beyond the regular season, do they repeat? Do they three-peat? Do they win four and five? I, I think they three-peat, and I think they, you know, four, of a five, four out of five years, this is the best team we've seen. Yes, I think they do. I'm barring major injuries sure. or something like yeah. that, I think they're the best team in the league.